Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This is part of the Spring Security Fundamentals series. In this episode, we build upon the Greening Web Services project that was constructed as part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. Over the next few episodes, we are going to build the components necessary to perform custom authentication and authorization with Spring Security. We need several components to construct a Spring Security solution. Our solution will retrieve account information from a database. Therefore, we require entity model objects and their corresponding Spring Data Repository interfaces. Spring Security provides base implementations facilitating integration with credential repositories like LDAP, CAS, OpenID, and others. If you've watched the Spring Boot Fundamentals video series, you know that we always promote robust application design through modularization to achieve a high degree of cohesion. What does this mean? Put simply, it means that your application design should seek to group logic within similar domain and functional responsibilities together into application layers and discrete components within each layer. To that end, we will define a business layer component to manage access to these security-related entity model classes. The first Spring Security component that we will create is a custom implementation of the User Details Service interface. This component is responsible for retrieving account information and returning it in a format that is understood by Spring Security, the User Details object. The user details service does not perform any authentication or authorization. To achieve that, we will create a custom implementation of the authentication provider interface. Finally, we will create the Java configuration class to wire these components together and declare the authorization rules for our Spring Boot application. We added the Spring Boot starter dependency for Spring Security in our last episode. However, let's take a quick look at the Maven Palm. Here is the Maven dependency. Spring Boot detects the presence of Spring Security on the class path and automatically configures the application with a default security setup. Beginning with this episode, we are going to learn to modify the out-of-the-box security configuration to meet our needs. Let's create an entity model which supports user authentication and role-based authorization. We want to remain aligned with the application technology stack that was established early in the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. That is, we want to use Spring Data JPA to facilitate data access and persistence. Let's create one entity named Account to model an application user's credentials and other attributes and we'll author a second class named Role to model the types of user roles which apply to the application. The Account Entity class should have attributes that facilitate Spring Security authentication behaviors. This entity will be modeled after Spring Security's User Details interface. In addition to the username and password, a User Details object has attributes which describe the user which describe if the user is enabled, locked, expired, etc. In the org example WS model package, create a new class named account. As you'll see, I'm adding the account attributes now. Notice that the account entity has attributes that manage the status of a user's account. Later, we'll use these attributes when we create the authentication provider. Use standard JPA entity annotations on the entity class and attributes.
Next, let's create the Role Entity class. The Role Entity models a Spring Security Granite Authority, which is simply a set of functionality which a user has been authorized to perform within an application. For our application, we will use roles such as user, admin, or sysadmin. In the org example WS model package, create a new class named role. Notice that the ID attribute is not generated is not annotated by generated value. That is because the role entity will not persist or save data as the application transactions are executed. Put another way, the role entity contains reference data rather than transactional data. The role data is inserted by a SQL script and the primary key value is explicitly set in the script. We need to declare a relationship between the account and role entity classes. In our application, one user may be assigned many roles. In data modeling terms, we can say that one account has many roles. For example, the account for Joe has the user and admin roles. Since the role entity is modeled as reference data, we may also say that one role has many accounts. For example, there are many accounts with the admin role. To model this many-to-many -many relationship, we will use a join table. Open the account entity class again and create an attribute to contain the set of role entities. This is a unidirectional relationship. The application only needs to know what set of role entities has been assigned to an account. It will never need to know the set of accounts which are mapped to a role. Therefore, we will not update the role entity to model this relationship. If you have watched the Spring Boot Fundamentals instructional video series, you've previously created HSQLDB initialization scripts. These scripts are detected by Spring Boot when the application starts and are automatically executed to create and populate the database. In the source main resources data HSQLDB directory, open the schema.sql file. Add create table statements for the account, role, and account role tables. Note the column and table constraints. The foundation of any application is its data. Properly modeled, constrained, and indexed data is imperative for a successful application. Next, open the data.sql file. Add insert statements to declare all of the roles which are used to secure application functionality. Also declare a few sample accounts using the account role table, account role join table to map them to their roles. Let's run the application to test the new functionality. 
open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server on port 8080. At this time, we're simply testing to ensure that the application starts without error. Remember that as the Spring Boot application starts, it creates an in-memory HSQLDB database using the schema and data scripts that we've just enhanced. Also, the Spring Data Component Scanner will detect the two new entity classes and attempt to map them to the database tables. If we have any problems in our SQL or Java code, it will cause an exception to print to the console. Since we've no, we have no exceptions, our security entity classes and data are correct. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of the Spring Security Fundamentals series. Subscribe to the LeanStacks YouTube channel and follow the LeanStacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new episodes are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this episode, see the GitHub repository URL in this episode's description.